Big Adam, what up, dude? What's going on, bro? How you doing, man? I'm good. Yo, thank you for being on my my show, man. No, I'm just kidding. This is just a, just a little video, bro. How you doing? Bless. Good yeah. Morning. Guys, special, special, special video, dude. Let's give it a run. We got Adam Elijah in the house. He's looking fresh as usual. <laughs> this dude is, he's a lot of things, but I would like to say first and foremost, a man of God, a guy who loves Jesus. And so Adam, I want you to share with the people, bro, a little bit of your experience, like before you met Jesus, mm -hmm. how you got to know him and what it's like now, bro, and anything else that you want to say about you know, what you're doing, dude. So I was raised in church. Um, you know, my, my family and I, you know, they went from a lot of different churches, a lot of different denominations as I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember giving my life to the Lord as a kid, you know, getting baptized and all of that. Granted, I knew it was the right thing to do and I wanted to please God with my life, but it wasn't until around high school that the question of serving God or living in the world or basically making the decision really came to play mm -hmm. because obviously there's a certain age of accountability to where you yeah. you end up your relationship with god actually matters in yeah, eyes. Yeah, your yeah. heart your motives your intentions you become accountable to the word so right. you know growing up in church it I, I saw a lot you know i saw people they would spend time in church sundays and wednesdays but then monday tuesday friday and thursday saturday their lives were hell. Mm, would you say that's like a common thing for, for some churches? I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that they would say that about leadership and use it as a cop out for their own life. Oh, if God's like that or church, blah, 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 then I'll do this, right? Yeah, no, 100%. People will use that as like, okay, well, nobody's perfect, right? right. We're all just sinners saved by grace. Right. And it was actually that mindset that that mentality that actually got me into a lot of trouble mm -hmm. because sin without recognition of consequence ultimately leads to a lack of iniquity. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. like, I, you know, I, I, that was the norm, that, right. that lukewarmness, that mediocrity in the body of Christ. That's what I grew up seeing, but I was a non-denominational, Baptist, Pentecostal, like all of them. Exactly, like yeah. growing up, bouncing around. And, um, but it gave me the opportunity to see What's really going on in the church? Yeah, wow, that's deep, bro. And so, you, you know, you hit that age of, they would say accountability, like you said, and and uh, you were seeing this stuff. What kind of made you jump forward to that moment or to yeah. that decision, so yeah. to speak, with Jesus? So I would say it was, it is very interesting actually. Right at the end of high school, um, you know, like you, you begin to formulate like, okay, like my life is going to look like this. This is what I aspire, right? Mm -hmm. And I had certain passions, certain things. Basically, I was in the middle of trying to make a decision of what's going to be the next steps for my life. Okay. I was like, okay, like, what is my life going to start to look like? So I kid you not, it was actually a divine setup by the Lord. Nobody mm -hmm. actually knows this. This was back in 2016. Um, my, my parents were not home. My brother wasn't home. And I felt to just go to my brother's room and I went on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I ended up watching this video about this guy. This was just about my salvation, like me giving my life to Jesus. Like this is where my journey really started, like mm -hmm. out of a genuine decision to serve God. Right. Uh, I watched this video and it's about, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this, where is, is this guy, he's married, he goes to sleep on the couch and the Lord gives him a whole dream about the day of judgment. Oh, wow. And, um, I was watching it, and I, and, and I would never normally watch that, but I was into the conspiracy stuff. Right, like, right, you know, right. Illuminati. And, uh -huh, and I was uh -huh. like, I wanted to learn about all that. But this was like something, and I knew it was the Holy Ghost that drew me to that video. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching it, and part of what this gentleman was saying was like, he saw all these people in line for Judgment Day, mm -hmm. and it was their spirit men, and in each of their spirit men, there were seeds in there. Mm -hmm. And there was a woman, that stood before God and she had a seed in her heart and God exposed to her that that seed was that she had a huge realm of influence mm. and she was actually serving the Lord. 
But then what happened was she, it got twisted and it got perverted. And because of a post and something that was out of iniquity, she started leading people astray mm. and she never repented. And literally she thought she was going to heaven and in an instant she got zipped into hell. And it was so quick that as she screamed, the echo had to follow her to hell. Wow. And, and I remember when I saw that it convicted me and I was like, wow, I'm like, I don't even have that much influence, but I'm not using it for Jesus. Mm. I'm not using it for the gospel. And I'm like, if that's somebody who thought that they were going to heaven, right? How much more people who, you know, just in our everyday lives, and Christians in general, mm. who don't have influence. Yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna break here just a sec. I always get so paranoid something's gonna happen, you know? It's like, was it recording? Uh, <laughs> guys, guys. Trust me, I've been there, bro. <laughs> Been there, learned the hard way. So if you see that REC go off, just let me know. Yeah, that's crazy you say that because like, I'm talking about those people who think that like they're going to heaven, think that they know Jesus. And I talk to people about, you know, maybe let's say there's somebody and we're talking about Catholicism, for example. Right. You know, and a lot of people, evangelicals and Bible Christians, so to speak, they have views on Catholicism and yeah we could talk about that in another time but I usually say to people like the spirit of religiosity like dead religion can be in any church anywhere you know what I mean and so I know even for me it's like I can get caught up in the motions mm -hmm. and I'm slipping into that that lane yeah. you know what I mean so that's interesting you say that bro so after that experience you know uh, what kind of launched you into the next season, man? How old were you in that time? I had just turned 18. Like, okay. Like, just, like, literally just turned 18. So you were out of high school by then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what kind of puts you into that next, that next place? Really, from that point on, I recognized that my religion wasn't working. Mm -hmm. What I had done all these years was not working. That now is, it's a fresh commitment. So what does my life look like now? I knew, and it was interesting because I would go, you know, when we would go, sometimes we would go to conferences. My parents, you know, would, would have me go to youth, youth camp, different youth camps. And um, it was the same word released over my life all the time. And it was about music mm. and ministry. Okay. And people would prophesy, I just see you on stages in front of thousands of people. Wow. Doing music. Yeah. And preaching the gospel. Mm. And to me, I was like, you know, I was in between for a while. But it, it followed me up my whole life. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm like, apparently you got some kind of call from my life. You got something for me. Yeah. What does that look like? Well, within three months, God began to bring relationships. Mm -hmm. That's how everything started for me. God actually brought people in my life. And these people ended up being like Christian hip hop artists. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard of that term, never heard of anything like that. You know, I never heard of the space, but within three months, you know, the Lord told me, he was like, you know, like, I'm going to start opening doors for you. Mm -hmm. And within three months, we were already doing a, a concert out of Cooper City and over, you know, in front of over 800 plus youth. Mm -hmm. This is within three months of me making that decision. Yeah. So I didn't have mentorship. I didn't have people like, you know, like my friends are my accountability. Right. And, and it, none of us were perfect, you know. So right. we, we were also all trying to figure it out. Right, right. So... What led me to that place, like the next season was actually coming out of that one, was when okay. I started, started, started with, you know, making that decision and the salvation prayer was like just coming from my heart, like, Lord, like, I just, I want to serve you, you know, mm -hmm. I'm done, I'm done mm -hmm. with the way I was. So I'm in that time, I'm doing concerts, things are picking up immediately, getting traction, I'm getting asked to go into music everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, but the thing that was lacking in my life was character and a true encounter with God. Because there's so many Christians that are saved, but have yet to encounter and experience God's presence. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking sure. about in a tangible way that marks them for life. Yeah, you know? yeah, bro. Even Paul, when he said uh, to the people in Acts, have you guys been baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. yet? They're like, we haven't even heard of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Who is that? He's like, you're about to find out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wow, bro, that's awesome, man. So what's been your experience, you know, since then with, let's say, three things. 
relationship because you mentioned relationship with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we can start there if you want. And then I want to talk a little bit about ministry and I want to talk about music. Absolutely. And maybe even how all three of those kind of yeah. relate. You know? So with a uh, relationship, that was the first thing because I found that the closer that I got with God, then he would bring me opportunities. Mm. Nowadays it's mixed up. People look for ministry and they actually run from relationship because there's accountability there. So yeah, I, I began to just, I got so hungry for God, that terminology, hungry, getting hungry for God, right? right. I was around nobody that was Holy Ghost and fire at that time. It mm -hmm. was just me by myself. Mm -hmm. I was so hungry for God. I was so willing to press into him. And I would literally go by myself to, um, you know, I would get off of work. I would, uh, you know, get, get done with the concert and I would go to Steak and Shake by myself, you know, mm -hmm. after work or whatever. And I would envision as if Jesus was standing, was sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it was interesting because I knew it was the Holy Ghost working on me yeah. and leading me into a relationship with God. But I would sit there and I would get food and I was like, ideas would come to me about mm -hmm. changing. Like, like changes that I would need to make. But it was actually the Lord speaking to me. Mm -hmm. And I would envision as if it was Jesus. Yeah, bro. Talking. That's so intimate. Yeah. It's like you're sitting down with the Lord, bro, just hanging out. Exactly. But he ministered. I never I never heard of that. Right. I never had an example. And I'm like, mm -hmm. am I crazy? I'm like, no, but like, this is working. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. like he, he began to show me things. And I, and I remember the deeper that I got into his presence, the more that he began to reveal himself to me. And... Mm -hmm. I began to develop intimacy with him. And mm -hmm. I never heard of that. You know, intimacy is into me, you see. So mm -hmm. as I began to, to to get to know him more, he began to show me who I am. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, like you really think of me like that? And he's like, yes, this is what I called you to be. And this is where it says it in my word. Mm -hmm. So all this is going on, my relationship is starting with God. I started to event, I was in Broward College at the time. I was actually evangelizing in Broward College to the students there. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard of evangelism. There was no evangelism at the church. I was right, right, so, right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all natural. All natural. Out of just a love for God. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. I would just go and evangelize to people. I would do my best to, to communicate with the crowds when I would do music. Um, mm -hmm. The love of God for them. And, but yeah. there was there was a cap limit that I had in my life at that time. You know, like there was, there was a, a level that I couldn't break past. That that was what brought me into the next place to where I was in Broward College and I was already doing concerts, already technically doing everything I wanted, mm -hmm. right? That I felt, okay, like I'm at this place, but I feel like I'm maxed out. Like mm -hmm. my life can't get past this place. Right. So I got desperate for God. I got, I got so hungry. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking through Broward College and as I'm walking through the hallway, I heard the audible voice of God for the first time in my life. I never heard that you can hear God like that. I'm literally walking through the hallway and I hear, it's like audible. Nobody else heard it but me. It was audible. And he said the words Bible college. And let me tell you right now, I'll tell you right now. I, I, I was like, I'm not a guy. <laughs> and I was like, if there's anybody who's not going to go to Bible college, it's me because I'm not perfect. Yeah. I thought you had to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, like it's hard. It was hard for me to grasp. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you, it echoed in my spirit for three days straight. I couldn't shake it. I couldn't break it off. It echoed in my spirit and I said, okay, I said, okay, God, you got me. And I said, if this is really what you have for me, then you'll, the opportunity will come to me. Cause I was looking at all these different universities, the Liberty, Trinity, all these other universities. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, if this is really you, then you'll bring it to me. Mm -hmm. And it won't be a financial burden. Right. I kid you not. Three weeks later, in a, a, a traveling evangelist by the name of uh, Evangelist Joshua Radford mm -hmm. comes to preach in this church in, in uh, Broward County. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, this church, we were at a, a, it was at a high school at that time, and um, ended up having lunch with me and my family mm -hmm. after the meeting. But during that meeting, in the, in the, in the, you know, the anointing starts to fill the place. I started to feel electricity on my hands and on my lips. I'm like, Ooh, what is this? What's going on? Mm -hmm. He lays hands on me. I fall out under the power of God. I'm like, what is this stuff? I was like confused. <laughs> I'm, like, right. I'm like, but I know it's God. I'm like, there's something different about what this man carries. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, I, and I honor that man of God because without him, you know, we end up having lunch with him, my family and I, which I promise you till this day, I have no idea why we had lunch with him. Mm -hmm. So this day, I have no idea. Well, now I know why, but like the purpose of why that. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So 
we have lunch with him and he I'm like okay well this is a man of God he's in the ministry traveling how does he provide for his family mm-hmm. and because in my mind I'm like preachers are supposed to be poor <laughs> right, right, right. This is the way I was raised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, you're preaching about the struggle, and I'm like, okay, so how do you provide for your family? Mm-hmm. And this man, Stone Cold, looks me in my eyes and says, by faith. He says, what are you called to do? And I told him, like, I told him a dream that the Lord gave me at that time for what I'm called to do. And as soon as I told him, keep in mind, he had no foreknowledge of anything that I'm telling him. Mm-hmm. He said, I'll give you a free scholarship and tuition to a Bible school in Temple, Florida, right now. What's your information? Right there, dude. I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, like what? Getting like, hit. Dude. You know, my mom's jaw dropped because she thought I was going crazy. She's like, no, you're going to finish college there. You're going to go to the military. I'm like, no, God's calling me out of Robert. I told her that for like three weeks. You know, and my, my family weren't wasn't in agreement with it. Okay. You know. Okay. But I knew God was calling me out. Mm-hmm. So He offers me the scholarship, and I'm like, I know that's God. Mm-hmm. That man knows absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. So I took the scholarship, applied, got approved literally had immediate favor so i was hearing the voice of god and acting in faith mm-hmm. so it was obedience so as i began to step out in faith i literally got paid to leave the college with that wow. money i bought my first studio i got the opportunity to be a substitute teacher and i, and I worked another job and, and just prepared three three four months until going to tampa mm-hmm. but it was insane to see how all of that happened you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 it, yeah. it was like my relationship with God started to take me somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So all of this, and, 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 it, and it, it goes into the relationship aspect because it leads into the encounter. Mm-hmm. Because out of the encounter with God and out of that whole thing, it was it was like a buildup, you know, like, like, a, like a movie buildup to a climax, right? Yeah. So pack everything. I leave everything. Leave my friends. Leave my family. I have so, I mean, there's so many details within that, but, you know, like just... To, to make a long story short, you know, packed up everything, left my friends, left my family, left everything that I knew, never lived by myself, never paid a bill before. <laughs> so my phone bill. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I, I know God's calling me out. So I went and I, I moved to Tampa and my first week of this Bible college is, is and, I, and I didn't even know who this person was, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown. Mm. Never heard of him, never heard of his ministry. But this man of God is, has been carrying revival across the world for literally now over 40 years in history. Yeah, it's crazy. So this is literally like, like the revival hub of the world. Mm-hmm. Literally. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking like, like it, and I never, I mean, I, I had never heard of Pastor Rodney. Mm-hmm. It was just the voice of the Lord brought me. It just so happened that the, the voice of God brought me to this Bible college mm-hmm. out of anywhere in the world. Yeah. So I go there. My first week, I have a radical encounter with God. No man laid hands on me. I'm literally there. Um, I had never heard about the joy. Never heard about the. I mean, I had heard about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, but not the not the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Mm. And I'm literally just in the service, and I'm surrendered. Like, like I literally felt. I'm in the service, and it's the beginning of the service, and it was during worship during the transition time, and. I just, I'm lifting my hands and my whole body starts to shake uncontrollably. Mm-hmm. And I, and I felt fire go through my whole body and I began to laugh uncontrollably mm-hmm. and cry at the same time. And I'm like, in my brain, like what's happening to me? And it was yeah. like overwhelming me. So from this point to the point that we were in Broward College, I heard the audible voice of God again, but it was like, the same conversation in, in two different time lapses, mm-hmm. but it was the same conversation. It was like time had it passed, you know. And the anointing, it, it goes, it, you know, the anointing. There's no distance in time in the realm of the spirit. So, God, a lot of people's stagnance in their life is traced back to the last place of obedience. Mm-hmm. God can't take them to the next place. Right. So I'm actually at this place, and I hear the audible voice of God. He says, "Come get at my feet." And I'm like shaking on the power of God. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, what's happening here, you know? And, and uh, I just sprint up to the front and to the altar. And I was the only one who did it. Mm. I just ran up to the front and I pushed past everybody. I was like the woman with the issue of love, mm. pressing, past, uh, pressing past the crowd. Yeah, crowd yeah. Yeah. And I get up there, my hands are lifted, 
and I'm getting gloriously baptized in the Holy Ghost, it get, it's getting like more intense. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, he says, go get lower. So I get on my knees and my hands, you know, I'm up and it's intensifying. And he says, get lower. So it gets to a point where it's in my, my hands, you know, I'm, I'm bending over, like I'm really slunched over and my face is on the floor and I'm like weeping uncontrolled. It's like intensifying, like I feel the anointing, the glory, yeah. the glory of God. And he says, get lower again. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like straight up, like, I mean, you would think it was crazy if you didn't know what's going on. Like, I'm face planted, my body full sprawled out on the floor. I'm getting gloriously baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he says this to me, he says, get lower. Mm. But I'm already laying on the floor. So I'm <laughs> Lord, like, I can't get much lower. I mean, uh, what, are you, what are you saying here? <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, that's what I thought. I'm like, yeah. I'm, how? I said it in my heart because I, I, I physically couldn't speak. Mm. I was literally communicating with God through my heart and my spirit. Mm-hmm. And the minute that I say, Lord, I don't know how. Because it was so, like, when you're, the Bible says, even like like the Apostle Paul like, fell as a dead man in God's mm-hmm. presence. Like, it's like, because it's his glory, he's holy. Yeah. In that moment, it was like, I said, Lord, I don't know how. It was every manifestation of his glory, his love, his power, his fire, his infilling, his quickening. I mean, I, I don't have words to describe to you, like, what it was, but... Mm-hmm. It engulfed my whole body, and it and it overtook me, and it was the presence of God, it was like electricity surging, surging my whole body. But it was like so intense. I thought I was gonna die. I kid you not. I'm crying. I'm, I'm and this is still going. I'm, I'm yeah. crying. I'm laughing, weeping, shaking under the power of God. <clears throat> and I literally said, God, I said, Did you bring me here to kill me? Mm-hmm. I literally said that to God because it, it was almost unbearable. Like my, I literally almost couldn't handle it. Wow. So I'm sitting there shaking on the power of God and everything goes black. So I, I had never heard of like everything that I'm experiencing. Nobody prepared me for, hey, bro, you, you just want to tell yeah, you right yeah. now, you're going to experience this. And then yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, in five minutes, then this will happen. Nobody told me that, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, what's going on? I thought I was going to die. <laughs> you know? So in that moment, um, everything was black. And literally, I get pulled out of my body, mm-hmm. and I'm standing over myself, and I and I see myself lying on a black canvas. So this is an open vision, mm-hmm. and I had never heard of an open vision. So that's what I'm saying. These things I never encountered these things. Right, right, right. Um, but even in the Bible, in, in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Mark, Luke, and John, you know, Jesus said, "I, I only do what I see my Father do. Mm-hmm. He must see something. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. He's seen in the spirit realm." Mm-hmm. So. The Lord took me out of my body and I see myself laying there in this completely black canvas and I see rocks form to my left and rocks form to my right. Mm. And where I'm lying at turns into a riverbed. Mm. So I'm looking at myself laying down in a river and the right side is green pastures and the left side is green pastures. And the Lord says to me, this is the river and it's on the inside of you. Mm. And boom, I get pulled back into my body. Wow. And um, I'm just like, I'm, I mean, I'm completely mind blown. I was gone for the next two hours. I had to get carried to my car. I was so inundated, filled with the Holy Ghost, drunk on the new wine of heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was just filled. I was, I was so overflowing. Yeah. You know, the Bible calls it the new wine. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was like drunk, like, like literally. And I've never been drunk in the natural. So mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. It was like, it was holy. It's like mm-hmm. real. Yeah. I didn't have anything to compare it to, mm-hmm. you know? Um, Greatest feeling you could ever feel in life, but I knew from that moment that I died. Mm. Like the identity of who I was died in that moment, and I knew absolutely nothing. Whatever I thought I knew, I didn't know anything. Mm. Whatever I thought I knew. So that's when my relationship really began with God was out of an encounter because I began to understand that this is the God of the heavens and the earth. This is the God of He spoke and life became. And and I'm like, wow. So God took me. There was a journey after that, but it started, my relationship started in 2016, but in 2018 is where I can definitely tell you that I came alive, mm, you know? Yeah. I became alive in Christ, you know, because the spirit, when I, when, in salvation, it was out of a genuine heart, and I, and I, and I was saved, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until I had an encounter with God that the word became the reality 
my life. Mm, that's that's a good point. Yeah. I'll just check here real quick. Got sound good. Everything good. Okay. So. Yeah, bro. That everything that you just explained, right? This encounter. I think it's so important that people understand like you can hear all kinds of arguments for why God is real, right? Yeah. Or why maybe uh, Christianity is, is, is true versus any other religion. You can ha literally have diagrams and mathematic equations <laughs> stating science and why it all makes sense. Right. But like until you yeah. feel Jesus, man, you, you, you have that encounter of yeah. love and relationship. I mean, even still on this side, would you say, like, we still, we need that every day, right? We, we, we go to the Word, we maybe read, we, we, we study these things, but it's like, at the end of the day, man, when we get to heaven, it's like, we're going to see Him, right. we're going to feel Him, we're going to experience Him. And like, what you mentioned about um, how, like, you're crying yet laughing at the same time, like, <laughs> name any other time in life where <laughs> that is possible it's like only jesus man and to kind of go from there right speak a little bit about your experience with ministry and then share with music and like what you got going on you know what I mean? yeah so with with ministry you know one thing that i had to learn in that time was you know for three years god was pulling things out pulling things out since I got into Bible school, pulling things out, putting things in, pulling things out, putting, it was a process, you know, mm -hmm. like weeding things out of my life. And then, but within that process, it was after that encounter, I got activated in the gifts. So from there on, I started praying for people. The first time I ever prayed for somebody to get healed, they were paralyzed from the waist down. Mm -hmm. And it was like a radical miracle. The per, it was actually over the phone. The person was in Las Vegas and, um, they had called in into the ministry because they needed they needed healing, mm -hmm. and and we were the last resort before the ambulance. So I'm like, well, I'm like, well, I mean, the lady's just gonna have to get healed. Mm -hmm. So I I just prayed the prayer of faith with this lady, literally, and I commanded you know for her to be healed. She drops the phone and starts screaming on the phone and says, I feel fire going through my whole body, mm -hmm. and I said, get up and stand up right now. God's healed you. And she gets up, she just completely healed. Wow. And that was the first, I'm like, wow. I'm like, but that wasn't hard. Mm -hmm. I wasn't fasting. I wasn't trying to right, make it happen. Right. I'm like, wow. I'm like, it's actually not hard. I'm like, it's almost like he's the one who heals people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, wow. Like, like, look at that. So with that, you know, I, I began to see the Lord using me very strongly in the gifts of the spirit. And, and, and and it was great. The problem was, is that I didn't have character. God was still developing my character. So th with ministers, there's always a temptation to go ahead of God sometimes. Mm. It's like, it's like, cause the Holy Ghost is not a tool belt. He's a person. He's, he's, he's a, he's holy mm -hmm. and he's easily grieved. So while God was using me, you know, I still had pride and, you know, all that stuff going on. So, you know, I lifted up in pride and I bumped my head a couple of times, you know, and I, and I had to, and I'm glad that it happened. I'm glad that the Lord never quit on me because, you know, if I hadn't learned, I would rather, you know, the Bible says that many will stand before him on that day and they'll say, Lord, Lord, did I not cast out devils? Did I not heal the sick? Did I not do great exploits in your name? And he says, depart from me, worker of iniquity, I never knew you. So that's actually, I'm like, wow, that's that's also for ministers, Pentecostals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a yeah, spirit filled, crazy. Holy Ghost and fire, people that are actually great signs and wonders. He's saying to those people, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, God began to instill the fear of God into my life. He began to literally work that in my life. Mm -hmm. And I be, it, it, I got I mean, I woke up real quick. Cause you know, I'm like, wow, well, like, what is it that God? I get used by God, but I get used, but it becomes all about that. 
then everything is trying to outdo your last miracle. Everything's trying to outdo the last manifestation in, in a meeting. Everything's trying to outdo so right, to compete. Right, right, right. No, there's no competition. Jesus said when he healed the sick, he was moved with compassion. Mm -hmm. But that comes out of relationship. Mm -hmm. So God began to, to work on me about that, and I had to lay it down. I laid down ministry. I laid down music. I laid down, even being used by God, I said, I lay it down. I said, God, if you never use me again, if you never want to, if you never want me to do ministry, or you never want me to do anything again, and you want me to just go to church and serve you and be a good on fire believer, I'll do that. So at that time, I didn't, you know, God was using me, but my my ego would get in the way of that. So I had to lay it down because I had, I had it was hard for me to lay down music, but now I'm like, okay, God's using me in this area. I also gotta lay down that down too. My my whole life has to be laid down. So I I got before God genuinely. God, if, if this is going to take me out, then I lay it down completely. Mm -hmm. Even if you never give it back to me or or whatever the case may be. I mean, I'm talking like, I mean, blind eyes seeing, deaf ears hearing, people getting delivered yeah. in the mall. I mean, in the mall, people falling out, shaking the power of God. And it's like, you, pride says it's you. And if you don't check it, you don't check that ego, it can take you out. Mm -hmm. So I knew that God was doing a work in me. And I'm like, I'm like, it's good that I learned it now. <laughs> you know, right, for sure. I'm like, get it out sure. of me now, Lord. Yeah, please, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And um, so I'm like, God, I'm like, if this is if, if this is going to take me out, Lord, I'd give it to you. I'm like, take it from me if it takes me out. Like, mm. take it from me. And um, I, I just lay my life down. And granted, you know, he didn't take it from me, but he definitely allowed me to get humble, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to test my character and, and yeah. uh, you know, allow things to happen. So with that, he began to, that's when he began to work character in my life. Because, yeah, I got the anointing, got the fire, got the Holy Ghost, you know. But the thing, I, like, Prophet Kenneth Hagin said this, and, and I, I promise you, like, this, this actually changed my life. Mm -hmm. He said, many ministers build their, their ministry on a gift, mm -hmm. and they're no longer in the ministry today. The reason why I'm still here is because I built my ministry off of the Word. So the word grounds that encounter. The word grounds the signs, wonders, and miracles. The word grounds everything because it's like, okay, oh wow, that guy's so anointed. Hey, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that's that's great. God's anointed me, but this is what the word of God says about all of this. You can have it too. Yeah. So people will draw people to themselves. No, we're supposed to the Holy Ghost draws people unto Jesus, and Jesus is the word made flesh. Yeah. So that was a process in my life where I had to literally die to everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Absolutely everything. That's crucial, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, even, uh, I think, I definitely uh, went through a season like that as well. And um, I just asked God for mercy by any means that he would just keep me out of that trap of pride because... Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall, man. And like, it's it's tough. And especially being like a leader in any context of a business, of a ministry, what a family, yeah. like the foundation will be character and, and the word, like you said, bro. Yeah. And from there, God, I believe, like he says, he, he, those who humble themselves will be exalted. Yes. You know what I mean? So those gifts that he gives you, he still wants to use them, yeah. you know, and now he might even take you to that next level of influence, let's just yes. say, because of that process, man. 100%. Yeah. So now share with us, bro, about your music, man. Lay it on, dude. Yeah. What does it mean for you? I know that you've had pro started with prophecies over your life. Yeah. You followed that call. You had the encounter. And then you're starting, you know, to really be a hands-on in the ministry. Yeah. But I know, knowing you, you see music as a ministry, as part yes. of the ministry. That's not like separate. Yeah. So kind of explain that. You know what I mean? What does that mean? So part of that process was actually the Lord. I, that was a huge question that I had because I'm like, I have this gifting to 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 make music and to, you know do audio engineering to be a hip hop artist to actually see that gift in other people mm -hmm. all of that and I'm like well how does this and the anointing Holy Ghost and fire and right. fivefold ministry how do right. these two mesh together and I spent it was hard for me to figure it out but it really I feel like it got grounded for me when I came to Orlando 
And initially, before, you know, when I, my first year of Bible school, the Lord told me, I'll have you here for three years, and then I'll send you somewhere else, but that'll be your home. Mm-hmm. So I knew that that was only preparation time. Mm-hmm. And trust me when I tell you it was preparation time. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, you know, it, it was, and you have, uh, that's when I met you around in that time. Right. So, you know, it, it, it was a process. And, um, you know, ultimately, uh, I got released to go to the river Orlando with under Pastor Alex. And that was the man of God that I needed in my life to hone the gift with music. Mm. So the river in Tampa with Pastor Ronnie gave me foundation. The Bible school put that in me, okay. you know, that time period. And you know, I got anointed, you know, like God began to pull things out of my life and sin and all this stuff. Yeah. And getting to where I was able to be with Pastor Alex, it brought me to a place to where now we concentrate focused on your character mm. and this is the key that will unlock the gifts to not just be in ministry but in the industry mm-hmm. because I never thought in a million years that I'd be called a business I, I, I would I would sit there in meetings and you know God's calling business people into the industry and, and you know we're going to see millionaires come, come in you know um, um, in the ministry and in the, you know, in the industries that God's called them to they're going to shake whole regions and I'm like I couldn't envision me being a minister and being a millionaire, you know, me being a minister, you know, in ministry and being a business entrepreneur, mm-hmm. the two, because I, I, it was completely out of the mold for me. Right, from right, right. Mm-hmm. So I had to renew my mind. But Abraham was both from the priesthood and he was a businessman. Mm-hmm. And God, God called him and spoke to him, you know. He was like literally <laughs> probably one of the richest dudes on the planet. In this time. <laughs> yeah. Like seriously, yeah. yeah, wealthy, blessed, favored by God, you know. So when I when I came with Pastor Alex, I had laid down music. I actually made a decision. I said I'll never touch music again. Not interested. You know, if God just called me to be here. I'll just serve. I'll open the door. I'll throw out the trash. I'll do whatever God wants me to do. I'm just so blessed to be here in the will of God. Because I know mm-hmm. God called God called me to be there. Mm-hmm. But Pastor actually had a vision for, for hip-hop long before I even met him. And the Lord spoke to him that he's going to send him a hip-hop artist to come to the church. And that's who you'll partner with mm-hmm. and, and that, to, to shape the music industry. Wow. And I never knew that until I got to the church. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and I asked the pastor, I'm going to tell him. And uh, there I met my wife. So I, I was in a season of, of just, and I'm, I still serve, you know, I, I still serve. I, I serve a lot of different things in the church. But, you know, serving is actually what brought the business to me because I was pressing in, you know, saving, you know, like, you know, soul winning, serving on Sundays, serving on Wednesdays, being faithful with the little things mm. that I was asked that, that were required, you right. know, and that, that there were gaps that I, I sought to fill in and also pressing into the relationship, being accountable, getting the vision mm-hmm. of the house, you know, mm-hmm. so. Part of this is that like God released a vision into my life. Problem is a lot of people that get zealous. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the fire. You know, I have giftings and talents. Let me go ahead and just start my own vision. That's an empty way. It, it says, unless you're faithful to serve under another man's vision, how can God trust you with your own? Mm, so as I was serving that vision, that's when the Lord released me to start doing business, which is also, which is ultimately ministry. Like, People separate it. It's actually equally as holy in the sight of the Lord because we need the, the same Holy Ghost and fire that we need in, in the services out in the streets. It's the same thing we need in the marketplaces. So how that whole came about was 2020, 2023, I believe the year. No, no. 2020, 2023. 2023. Yeah. yeah 2023. Um, exactly when you started oh no, no, it was right before, right before that. Okay. So right before 2023, nearing the end of 2022, um, around October. So actually around this time, like early October. Um, no, no, end, end of end of October, November, actually. Yeah, so end of October, early November, I felt the Lord pulled me back into music. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, I don't want to do it. It's so corny. The space is corny. I'm not interested. You know, like it's just ah, cringe, you know? So... I wasn't interested, but the Lord kept pulling me and I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay. I just got married. I'm like, you know, I'm like, yes, music. everything's amazing. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Life is, life is better now, you know? Uh-huh. Like, so 
But then uh, the Lord was pulling me back into it, and, and I, I said, okay, God, I really need you to confirm to me because I don't want to do this on my own accord. My pastor already released me to do it. He had already given me the blessing and released me into my call. He says, you know, like, 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 like your commission to go into that field. He already released me to do it. I already had the release. I just didn't want to. I still was like, I, I just need to know. You know what I mean? Right, right. So literally it was 4 a.m. It was like, like early November. I, I can't articulate what day it was, but it was literally 4 a.m. And you don't think things like this are going to happen. You know, like you don't think these things. It's 4 a.m. And I'm conscious. I, 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 like, it's like I woke up, but I was like, I knew it was, it was like I was sleeping at the same time. I was like semi-conscious. And I'm laying in my bed, but I begin to hear my, my spirit man, like the Holy Ghost, my, my, my spirit man, praying in other tongues as I'm laying there. Mm. So I'm like, I'm like semi-conscious and I hear other tongues, like, and diverse other, like deep groanings of tongues in my spirit man. And it got more intense and intense and intense. My, and I didn't realize my whole body was shaking uncontrollably. The whole bed was actually vibrating. The whole bed was shaking. My wife woke up and asked if I was okay. And I could hear her, but I couldn't respond to her. Wow. I'm like literally like, like, like shaking uncontrollably. And I, and I couldn't, nothing was coming out of my mouth. I wasn't saying anything. Wow. It was in my spirit, man, that this was happening. So literally it was in tongues and then the interpretation came. And it was like, it was as audible, as clear as day, as if when I was in the, the, the hallway of our college, when I first got to, you know, into the, the Bible school and all of that, you know, it was clear as day. Mm. And it was the Lord saying, I own the industry. Mm. And then he said it again. I own the industry. And it's like, like, it's like thunder. Mm. It shook me to my core. The very, the very, like, I was shook, shook into the core. Shook like, shook it, Ugh, like, yeah. shook it. It, like, it shook me. And the last thing he said was, I own the block. That's what he said. He said, I own the block. Mm. I'm like, I'm like, I mean, this is God. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's good. So I was praying for the confirmation. And I, and I, and when I came up out of it, I was like, I couldn't sleep. I was up from that 4 a.m. The rest of the day, like, shook mm. under, the, like, under the power of God, under the anointing. And I knew, he gave me revelation on it. I knew that he was commissioning me not to just be in the industry, but that I would own and steward the industry on his behalf. Mm. That I was going to, 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 you know, every soul, every, every way that the soul of my feet shall tread the land is given unto me. He's sending me to the land to subdue it on his behalf. Mm. So I knew that he delegated authority to me. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by everywhere that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So I had I had a commission. I had a I had a word from God. Yeah. So that's how my journey started. Wow. And um, I went. I, I got all uh, my equipment actually arrived the day the next day. Oh, it was wow. it was actually insane. That same day my equipment actually arrived. So I'm getting my equipment set up. You know, taking these practical steps, getting my studio set up. Um, Ended up making an album in a month and a half, fully, fully recorded, mix and master called Mosaic. Mm -hmm. And I made that album in a month and a half. During that time, the Lord sent me my producer, Austin O, um, Austin all the way from Canada. I'm in the studio with Austin <laughs> Literally, you know He's right there. He's right there in the back. Yo, yo. <laughs> he did. So, you know, when God calls you to a field, he calls you to the people in that field, into the industry, you know? So the first person that got called to be by my side was Austin. You know, great, yeah, there's my wife. But what I'm saying is like in the industry right, already, right. it was Austin. God brought me that relationship. The Lord spoke to him mm -hmm. and um, we got connected. And I didn't know that was gonna result into starting a business. So first it started with the music. The Lord called me into full time to go into, you know, it, into the music. When he called me to go full time into music, I was like, how am I gonna have income? You know, if anybody knows streams and how you get paid off of that, off the bat, just starting, you're not gonna make sustainable income from that. Right. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Right. So this was in, into January when this whole journey started. Um, dropped an album, 
ended up being in the radio in Texas, uh, preached the gospel on the radio. Um, I mean, people thought that I was signed because of how excellent that I was pushing the content, mm -hmm. how excellent I was pushing the music, like high level, every, everything. I was mm -hmm. looking to do everything like five star, mm -hmm. high level. Mm -hmm. So come January, I said, okay, I'm gonna fast. Now we're in 2023, so now we're in this year. Um, I said, I'm gonna fast. I'm gonna fast for three weeks, liquids only. I'm gonna press in for this next year. I'm gonna believe the Lord for, I, I'm gonna get everything that he has for me this upcoming year, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm pressing and I'm fasting at that time. And bro, let me tell you, like, we were struggling like, like financially. And it wasn't that we were struggling, like we were literally like, like they're scraping the barrel and then they're scraping the barrel and then looking under the barrel to see if there's anything there. <laughs> you know? Because oh. it was a step of faith. I personally didn't want to make that step. I didn't. I actually fought with the Lord for three weeks. Mm. Yeah, I, I fought with the Lord for three weeks because I didn't want to do it. Like in the sense of like, you know, like this doesn't make sense in the natural. I know what people will think. Mm. But I had to I had to put it down. And ja and in January, during my fast, second week of my fast, Pastor Alex uh, says, you know, I, I need to meet with you. <laughs> so so uh -huh. I said, I said, okay. So I'm like, this is the Lord. <laughs> something's cooking. Yeah, something's cooking. That guy's working something out. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, this year, you will do concerts. <clears throat> you will start doing concerts. And this year, you'll start preaching and doing ministry. Like, like, like I'm going to open up both doors, and we'll see how you do with it. Mm -hmm. And it's going to start to open up this year. Things are going to start to happen for you. That's what he told me like during that time period. So I already knew things were going to start coming down the pike. Right. Um, I meet with Pastor Alex. And during that meeting, Pastor ended up having, the Lord spoke to Pastor Alex for the past three days to meet with me and told him what it was about. And it was about my situation. Mm -hmm. I meet with Pastor Alex. And he asked me, he says, how are you doing all the music? Like, like, how are you, like, who are you paying and doing all? I said, no, I'm doing all of it. He said, what do you mean? I'm like, engineering. Laid down the vocals. Um, you have a producer now. He's like, he said, bro. He's like, you already have a business, right? In your hands right now. He said, as a matter of fact, you already have clients that are waiting for you to go out and and, and reach them. Mm. I'm like, I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I do. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. I'm like, yeah. And and then that and then that was the word of the Lord. He, and then he gave the word of the Lord. He said, you'll never look back. From that point, I haven't looked back. My whole life literally has changed. The Lord gave me the, the business name, Remnant Sonics, and um, it's a production company. Mm -hmm. And this company will be a multi-million dollar production company, and it'll be a global company. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to do whatever we want in the ministry. You mm -hmm. know, I'm building the ministry that God's called me to do off of the back of business, mm -hmm. ultimately. And this is being faithful with the people he's sending me, my team, and um, giving, high excellent quality and also being very integrous with our sales the way we conduct our business the way that we right. do things we do things above approach we do things to where we know that it's been done you know uh across the board you know, and it's been 100 percent both business and ministry mm -hmm. i'm on calls with hip-hop artists all the time mm -hmm. like all the time and it has been countless like th these dudes are repenting some of them have been stagnant in sin backslidden doing Christian music. Mm -hmm. And this is a whole other subject that I can get into, but I'm talking, these guys are getting delivered to devils. I mean, I'm talking like like devils, like real devils coming out of these guys. Getting wow. getting delivered, baptizing the Holy Ghost and fire, having encounters with God, uh, rededicating their lives to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We did our first event in Texas this past year. Everything that God spoke came to pass. He said the first place I've opened up to you is the region of Texas. You'll do ministry and business over there. I went out. We, we, I went out there with my team, uh, Austin Noel, my wife, um, Kit Prince, um, and we, we went out there. We're, we're, we were part of Gifted Fest. Bro, people were getting freaking delivered of devils, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Wow. We were out there, and this is like like at a Christian concert. Yeah, you know. So there's been like a whole other other level of, of where the anointing is very practical. People separate practicality from the anointing, but then they separate, you know, the too practical, less anointing, more right. anointing, less practical. No, no, they're, they're both balanced. Right. Everything God does yeah. is in proportion. So that's how the business got started. The business got started in the anointing. And 
I made I made a uh, I made a covenant with the Lord that I'm gonna give that I'm gonna honor the anointing, you know. So I cut covenant with God and I give a percentage out of what comes into the business and I sew it back into that ministry. I, I, I bless the men of God that God's actually spoken and birthed that out of, you know, and that's actually the key to my success and my growth. Because mm. I'm a blessing. I and I don't and that's a whole it's about honor and, and that's a yeah. whole other subject. But ultimately, yeah, you, you need to honor those who are above you. Sure. Honor honor the pastors that speak into your life. Honor the people that have paved the way for you. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's what I stress a, a, a lot to these rappers and these customers. Who's your pastor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, I mean, no, I don't really have one. I really go to church. Oh, I'm like, okay, so you're just not in the body of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, yeah, bro. I mean, that's like a an American plague among Christians mm -hmm. today is, yeah. is not having a accountability to a leader, a pastor, mm -hmm. you know, a church. So that's good stuff, man. And I love what you said there at the end about being a blessing to others. And we talked a little bit about Abraham. Mm -hmm. When you study the Abrahamic covenant, which we are still recipients yeah. of being that the seeds of Abraham are those who have faith in Jesus. Yeah. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to multiply your descendants. I'm going to make you a great name. Mm -hmm. But our part is that you shall be a blessing. That's right. So you're yeah. upholding that, man, that principle and that covenant. Yeah. You're in it, bro. That's really awesome, man. Thank you so much for sharing, bro. You're an awesome, dude. Thank you, bro. Love you a lot. Share it with the people where they can find you. What you got cooking, man? You got any music that just released? Anything you want to point them to, bro? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at Adam Elijah. Um, you can check out my company, Remnant Sonics, on Instagram and YouTube. Um, check out our website at www.remnantsonics.com. Um, if you're a new artist, you know, you're aspiring, you're coming up, whatever you're looking to do, if you need audio engineering, beat engineering, beats, custom beats, you need digital art, we got you, whatever you need. And if you ever need any film, if you need any music video shop, come to my guy Kyle right here. We'll, we'll get you connected. Um, Music-wise, you know, we, we have a lot. I mean, my brain just went like, Error, error, delete, all delete, go back. Mm -hmm. But we actually have an album coming out called Upper Room, and it's actually a producer album by Austin Noel. Come I, here, dude. I, I come here, bro. Oh, the Give it a run, dude. This is this is my my What's going on my fellow Canadian Canada. my 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 fellow Canadian producer all the way from Canada, Austin Noel, Ontario, Waterloo, Toronto, whatever. Wait, what? It's all the same. <laughs> But tell them about the project real quick. Yeah, man. So Upper Room, um, it's going to be dropping December 26. I'll give you the date. But um, Link this, in the description, y'all, for all this yeah, stuff. Yes, sir. But no, nah, this album is based off of the first experience and encounter I had with Christ. You know, like truly, you know, and, and with the Holy Spirit. And when he filmed me, you know what I mean? And this album is, you know, me taking artists from around the globe and curating the sound, you know, of the upper room, what that would sound like, you know what I mean? Like in the book of Acts, like Acts chapter two, it talks about, you know, the mighty rushing wind, but it also talks about a sound, you know what I mean? So I sat down, I'm like, you know what? What does that sound look like? You know what I mean? What, uh, what sound is that gonna be? You know, so I had to sit down, plan it out um, and make it happen. You know what I, so I, I invested in the features and you know it's it's gonna be crazy man December we go out you yeah know, upper room season so when I say like like in my project I, I I've treated it as if it was my own project I, I'm behind the whole thing I love it from start to finish the project is next level it's great I don't know any other producer projects that have I personally haven't heard anything like it personally and um, you guys are in for a treat so we have plenty more things coming down the pipe 2024 is our year, 2023's already been our year. We're taking over. Remnant Sonics, baby, you already know what it is. Give it a run, dude. Oh. Keep it G-Bay. Oh, let's go. <laughs>